Welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we're introducing our brand new stamp set, Thanks a Bushel and its coordinating dies. This set is so cute for fall and it's awesome for teacher gifts too, so let's go ahead and check it out. Here we have our bushel of apples, a single apple, and an apple with a bite out of it. We also have an open heart and a solid heart too. And then we have all of these awesome smiley faces that you can add to the apples or any other stamp sets that you might have too. And I love the styles of the smiley faces. The glasses just crack me up and this sad face is so funny. I love the mustache one. And then this one might be one of my favorites with the tongue sticking out. Then we also have a little angry face, which is cute for the apple with a bite out of it. Another style of glasses face. And then my other favorite, the heart eyes smiley. And then, of course, a nice little traditional smiley face, too. Then we have some great sentiments. We have thanks a bushel and then sentiments that can go with it for being a great teacher and for always making me smile. Then we have one other phrase, I heart you, a bushel and a peck, and an exclamation point to add to the end of those phrases. Next, I'm going to be using my Copic markers to color in these apples, and these apples are so much fun to color. I love them. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay down my lightest color add my medium, and then blend that out with my lightest color. I'm going to add my darkest around the edges, go to my medium, and then to my light again. And that's how I'm going to be coloring all of these apples. Now you'll notice that I leave one part of the apple area white still when I'm coloring it. So you'll see here with this next apple, I'm going to leave one area white, and that's because that's the area that I want to be the lightest. And when you layer Copic markers over and over again on each other, they do become darker as the color layers on top of the previous color. So I try to leave one area of the apple lightest as possible so that I'm really getting the true color of my lightest marker. So you'll see I'm only going to add that light marker right at the end, and it really gives it a nice bright finish instead of layering the color too much. So that's one thing I just really like to do and I'm going to do it once again here. Now just do a little bit of that light marker right at the end. I'll color in the leaves for the apples and then I'm going to color in the apple with a bite out of it like a Granny Smith apple. And for the bite area I'm actually going to layer over a gray marker over it to make it look a little bit more like the bit area of an apple. Next up, I'll be coloring in the basket. And my two markers here, they, they're kind of hard to blend. So I'm touching my light one to my dark one to create a medium shade to help me blend these two colors together, which really helps. And then I'm keeping it lightest towards the middle of the basket so it makes it look like the basket is kind of bulging out in the center. Now here we have the coordinating dies for this set. And you can bend them apart of the tabs or use your wire snips to separate them. Then you can line them up with your stamped images, and I like using post-it note tape to hold them in place while I run them through my die cut machine. And then here I love how striking those red apples are with that awesome white border around them. Next, it's time to create a background for these apples, and I thought a nice blue kind of gradient sky would be fun. So I'm using Peacock Feathers Distress Ink, and I'm starting off of the cardstock and then moving on to it to make sure that I don't have any harsh edges. And I'm going to keep doing this over and over again to build up the color to a nice, dark, rich color. So you'll see I'm just keeping on doing the same exact motion and really building that color up. Now to get the ombre effect, I'm going to switch to tumbled glass, a lighter color, and blend those two together. And I'm going to switch between the two colors to make sure that the edge between them is nice and blended. I just love how these two colors look together. Now I forgot to cut my piece with a stitch rectangle, so I just did it after I did all of the inking. I just ran it right through my die cut machine, and now I have a nice stitched edge to give it a nice finished look. Now I wanted to create a base, kind of a hill, for the bushel of apples to stand on, and I thought using a brown plaid would be really fun for that. So I'm going to use the same size stitch rectangle, cut a rectangle, and then cut a stitch till side from it so that they're stitching all the way around the piece. And then I cut a stitched rectangle frame from some Noble Fur cardstock. Next up, I'm going to stamp my Thanks a Bushel sentiment right onto my panel, and then I can start to build my scene. So I'm going to add my hill, and then I'm going to add that rectangle frame with some foam tape there just to give it a nice little dimension to it. And then next up, I've decided I needed to add some smiley faces to these apples. So I'm going to add a winky face and a smiley face to them. That way I can just add a cute little fun touch to this card. 
I'm going to add all of my pieces on with some foam tape, overlapping those apples on the bushel to kind of create a cute little seam with them. And then I'm going to take a scalloped rectangle and cut it from some chili pepper cardstock. And I think it looks really pretty with the red for the apple and then the green for the leaf surrounding the card. Then I'm gonna take the whole thing, adhere it onto that scallop panel, and then I'm gonna stamp on the inside of a card base. And I'm stamping the for always making me smile and then putting a little smiley face there, but I could have used the for being a great teacher too. Now I'm just gonna adhere that card base onto the back of my scalloped rectangle. And I have a sweet card that I think would make anybody's day. I just love that little smiley face on the inside of the card too. Next, I thought it would be fun to create a teacher gift with this stamp set. So I'm going to take out my scallop treat box die and die cut two pieces out of craft card stock. Then I'm going to go ahead and stamp a sentiment onto the box. And I just love this box because there is space to stamp a sentiment on it. And then I can go ahead and start to form this box once I've stamped on it. So I'm going to be folding on all of those embossed lines that the die created for me. So the outer tab and the inner tabs. Then I'll fold that whole arm extension over. Then I'll fold to form the base of the box, one more fold over, and then the last fold is actually going to fold in the other direction. Then I'll repeat the same thing with my other piece so that I'm ready to form the box. Now once I have both pieces all folded, I can flip them over and then turn this piece to create a T-shape, and that's what's going to form the box. So the next thing I need to do is add some strong adhesive to it. So I'm going to add some to one base of the box and then to all four tabs, so the two tabs on this piece and the two tabs on the other piece too. Next, I can remove the liner tape on the base piece and line them up in that T-shape that we talked about earlier. And then I can go ahead and remove the rest of the liner tape and form the box by lining up those edges together. And it's really, really easy to do. And once you do it once, it goes by super quickly. So I'm going to line up all of those edges and my box is going to form. And one of the best things about this box too is that it can fit a gift card, which is perfect for a teacher gift. So once this is all formed, I'm going to go ahead and close the top part of the box. And that's one of the reasons I love this box is you don't need adhesive to close the top, so you can open and close it as many times as you want. Now to kind of give it a fall feel, I thought it would be fun to distress the edges. So I'm taking some antique linen distress ink and a foaming blending tool and just running that all over the edges of the box, going around to the back side and also the top of the box too, which I think looks really cool because it makes that scalloped edge stand out even more. And once this is all done, it's time to start decorating the box. So I'm actually gonna paper piece the thanks a bushel bushel of apples here. So I'm going to stamp it on some pattern paper from Perfectly Plaid Fall and then stamp it again on some brown paper. I'm going to die cut both of these with the coordinating die. And once that is done, I can start to put these two pieces together. So the first thing I'm going to do is color in all of the little leaves green. And then I'm going to trim along the brown piece, cutting the apples off of it. So I'm just going to trim right along that edge right there. And then I can add some adhesive to the back of it and line it up with my apples. And this is a great way to color in the stamp set without actually having to color. Now here I'm going to take a piece of noble fur cardstock that's three inches wide and then cut it with a simple stitch till side border. I'm going to add the apples on with some foam tape and then to add a nice little finishing touch I thought it would be fun to add some peppermint lawn trimmings to the top. So I'm going to tie a bow at the top of this and then I thought it would be fun to do something kind of cool with the bow ends. So I'm actually going to use some glue dots on the box to keep the bow ends in place. So I'll just trim that edge off there and then add a little glue dot right into the corner to hold everything together. And I think it's a really cool look and that way the bow ends don't cover up the sentiment, which is kind of nice too. And here is the finished look and I think this would make any teacher's day. And here is one more look at the two projects. I love that it's perfect for every day and perfect for teachers. So I cannot wait to see what you guys create with this set. Thank you so much for watching and have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.